Well, it's November 2016. Well, it's not actually November 2017, but it kind of feels like that to me because I was meant to do this shoot and this video on the exact same date last year. But just as I arrived here, I had car trouble, broke down, I ended up getting me towed all the way back home again. So that put an end to that. So I've set a few days aside to try this again. So here I am, I've made it this time. Oh, and it's always water in the Lake District, by the way. So this is gonna be similar to my Thelmere and Derwent water videos, where I concentrate solely on one lake and try and get different views from all sides. Well, this at least is gonna be my interpretation of the lake. So it may not include all the views you're familiar with. So I won't be doing this, or this and definitely not this sorry ira well it's actually quite sunny here today which is quite unusual for the lake district quite unusual for my videos actually so i'm gonna have to choose one location to try and make the most of this because uh, i don't think it's forecast like this for the next few days but it's a typical libran this could be a tricky decision that's why i think this way. Well, I just realised that this spot where I've just done my intro is the very first location I ever visited when I came to the Lake District for the first time. It's my first ever shot of it by Allswater. I remember that fence that was back in 1995, shooting on film. I'll show you the shot I got from here. Well, my chosen view this afternoon is going to be the view from the top of Hallin Fell, which is on the east, north side, northeast side of Oldswater. It's not so much a view of Oldswater, it's more down the valley of Martindale, but you do get a view of Oldswater from the very top. Plus, for a non-hill walker like me, it's not too bad a climb. Actually, I've forgotten how steep a climb this actually is. Well, this is the view down Martindale. This is the foreground, there's the view. But to make this shot work really well is it needs breaking light. And what I mean by that is having lots of cloud, but then the sun just breaking through the cloud for a dramatic shaft of light down the valley there. Now, I've, I've tried this shot twice before in the past on cloudier days and haven't had the light. And here at the moment, I've got the complete opposite. Got the light, but almost no cloud. So I really don't know if this is going to work or not. But this is why I hate blue sky days. Too pretty, too pretty. So if I take you over here, this is the view down Oldswater. You can see we've got these lovely rocks here to use as foreground, nice and jagged. And then you've got Old water over the back there. So it's a fantastic view from up here, but it's just not going to work if I'm looking into the sun. The contrast is too high. It needs more cloud to break up that sky up there. Hold back the sun a bit. Well, a little bit of cloud has now drifted in and blocked out that sun a bit. So I've got a much lower contrast scene to deal with here. That cloud is really slow moving though, so whether it breaks through and gives that shaft a light, I don't know, but it's going to take a while. Um, it possibly that the sun's um, too low in the sky and too far behind the mountains now for it to even get to reach the valley. But you can at least take a couple of shots, both here looking down Martindale and the view overlooking Oldswater. So I'm using two grads here, uh, a three-stop hard and a two-stop medium because that sky is still quite bright. 
um, but it's just fingers crossed whether we get that little break in the cloud shaft of light down the valley to give me that perfect shot I'm down here at the southern end of Oldswater this morning. Um, I got here just before sunrise. I do actually get up for sunrise, even if I don't like shooting sunrise, because I like the tranquility and calm you get at this time of day. Um, and that was what I was hoping to capture this morning. But just as I set up by the shore, the wind picked up and a little bit of rain came in, so it spoiled the, the calmness and the, the smoothness of the water. And we've still got that breeze at the moment. I'm hoping it's going to die down again. So I've moved around a bit more, and I'm going for a slight telephoto view down through that valley down there got some nice cloud coming in even though there's no sort of sunrise colour or any sort coming through it's a it's a moody looking view with the overlapping mountains so that's my view at the moment that's what I'm trying to capture hopefully the the wind will come down again we'll get the uh, the smoothness to the water a bit of reflection otherwise I'll try and smooth it out myself with a filter but this is my shot this morning Well, I've set myself a little challenge here at Oswald to this morning. As you know, I like to challenge myself now and again. Um, whoa, hold that thought. This idea worked out so well, I'm going to make it into a separate video. So we'll fast forward to the afternoon instead. Well, I've come down to the southern end of the lake now, and there's these famous jetties um, just behind the hotel here. Much photographed, especially this one. I think this one appears in every doctor's surgery in the land. You may not have seen it, or you may have done. But for me, these aren't my subject. And that's why I haven't come here, possibly what would be the ideal time of day, um, sunrise, something like that, classic view, looking up there. To me, that's the cliche shot, and that's the one I don't want to get. There's a much more interesting shot. To me, it's the better view. So for me, the interest isn't the jetties, it's this little bit of land just over here to the left of them. That to me is much more interesting. There's a lovely little S shape going on there. Really nice shot. I'm going to go for black and white I think on this. It's very simple. You've got the, uh, the hillsides coming down from the left as well. That's the interesting shot. That's the non cliche shot. This is my version of this view from the southern end of the lake. That's the one for me. <laughs> How'd you get a load of geese to get out of your shot? Psh, 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 psh. Go on, let's go around. Psh, psh. There's more coming in now. Psh, psh, psh. Look at the light on the hills. Spoiling my shot. However, having said all that, the light just did get very interesting over here, especially on the water. So I did just take a shot with the jetty. Oops, eating my own words. Oh well, it was a good shot. Well, I'm still down here at the southern end of Oldswater. 
It's only about an hour to go until sunset now. Not that you'd know it, there's no light. I was hoping it would break through last minute, which it's still got time to. But I'm just exploring around the shore and I found two possible shots I can do from here, which I quite like. One is using dominant foreground and one isn't. So we've got the view looking sort of southeast along here. We've got this fallen tree down here, which is giving a nice leading line. Um, there's a nice group of trees on the right hand side just leaning over in, towards the lake um, the hills coming down from the left so a very simple looking shot but i do like the arrangement of the tree the growing trees and obviously the hillside so that's my first shot i'm going to do my second shot is based on the fact that from the southern end of old water if you look towards the north there's not much foreground to use when you're looking that way there's no real rocks there's no real interest Anywhere along here, I had a look, never found any sort of interest. So that's what I'm kind of going with here. What I like about that is they've got some really nice clouds up in the sky above there. It's way out in the distance, so I'm going to use not too wide an angle lens. But again, there's no foreground here, there's no rocks, there's no trees here to use. And so all I'm going to use as a foreground, if you want to call it, is the open water. It's a non-foreground foreground. foreground where the open water leads the eye into the view to the dominant subjects, which is the hillsides and the view beyond, and those rather lovely clouds up there. And of course, the interesting thing about this picture is that I'm not using an ND to slow down the exposure. I'm wanting to keep those ripples for a change, which is opposite to what I'm normally doing. And it's those ripples that are helping to make this picture work. Can you hear that? Not the cars, wait for them to pass. Silence. This is rare, just me on my own with this spot all to myself. No photographers, no workshop groups. It's a long time since I've been to the Lake District and had this. Well, I'm out on my final shoot of this trip, my final location. So you can see I'm currently sheltering from the showers that are passing through. And I'm up on the west side of uh, Oldswater. This is uh, Glencoyne Park. And I chose this over the nearby uh, Galborough Park, which is that one over there. The, uh, the more obvious view. I have, been, I have done that before, but I thought I'd try this one. And this, this, uh, this viewpoint looks a lot more interesting. But as you can see, uh, currently sheltering from the showers that are passing through, but that's, that's a good thing because we are getting breaks in the cloud. And this is just the kind of light that I wanted and the kind of conditions I wanted the other day at Hallin Fell rather than those blue skies. The showers passing through, nice fast moving clouds, and then you get those breaks in the clouds, get those shafts of light down the valley. How are you doing under there? You keeping dry? Good, we don't want you getting wet. So anybody wants to know, this is my uh, makeshift uh, umbrella holder. Just two wristbands here holding the umbrella to the tripod. Um, I usually take this off when I'm taking the picture so it doesn't upset the camera, but it keeps it steady on there so I can work hands-free, put the filters on, etc., and uh, keep the rain off the filters. So it works quite well. But I think the rain's stopping for the moment, so let's show you the view. So this is me up here. Getting some breaks in the cloud now. Now that rain's drifted across. But every so often we get those shafts of light coming down the valley there, giving lots of drama. And this is what the Lake District's all about. None of those blue skies, it's the drama you want to capture here. So I'm doing a shot here with those trees down here in the foreground. Well, I think there's going to be quite a few views to do from here, not only just those line of trees, but some more open views where I can perhaps get a bit of foreground. There's a bit of variety up here. Um, so I, as I move around between the showers, I hope to get a couple of shots here. Now, even though this uh, umbrella is doing its uh, job here, 
A little tip which you may or may not know already, um, when you get drops of water on the front of your lens or your filters, rather than grabbing your lens cloth to wipe them off, which often smears, little blower, these rubber blowers, which you use for sensors or whatever, do that and blow the water droplets off rather than wipe them off. Come off much easier with no smearing, does the job a treat. Well, I'm going to leave that intro because you probably wouldn't believe I was stood here in the rain otherwise. It looks like it's a summer's day now and I could be here in a t-shirt. But this is the kind of conditions I wanted here with those showers passing through and then the heavy clouds above. Um, I say, this is Glencoyne Park, the viewpoint I'm on, and that's Galbarrow Park over there, the one I didn't decide to go to. Galbarrow, and there's Helen Fell over there. That's the view you often see shots of Oldswater from. That's a bit of a harder climb to get up to because the road goes up through the middle of these two hills but there's a parking um, lay-by just up here so you can just walk across onto this viewpoint so it's really easy to get to and i'm waiting for those shafts of light to come through as the cloud breaks as the clouds roll in all the drama and all the impact of this kind of view and it's exactly what i wanted at hallenfell the other day and i didn't get and it was, it was this kind of conditions I wanted. And just have those little shafts of light coming through and that will light up that valley like a spotlight, really. But for my second shot, I've just moved a bit closer to these line of trees, which I really like the shape of. So I let them go for a semi-silhouette against the water and the hillsides there. Just waiting for those shafts of light to come through now. Um, it's just a shame all this um, lovely bracken here is all flattened down because that would make good additional foreground here but it's all kind of flattened down i hope we we'll find some better bits somewhere else well i've moved along a little bit more now so i'm on the other side of those trees that i was using as foreground and i've got a bit more of an open view here so no trees around here just an open view but i have found this um big boulder down here and this little is that a hawthorn tree just there? A um, bit of an obvious thing to go for, but you know, it'd be rude not to. Uh, the rock's not necessarily in the right position. It's slightly um, to my left a bit more than I would want. I just want it over to the right a bit more, just to give a bit of separation between that and the tree. They're kind of in line with each other. So I'm trying to set the tree over the water rather than the land, but it's proving a little bit difficult to be able to balance the two up. So I think this is going to work better as a vertical shot rather than horizontal just because they're they're not separated enough so it's going to be a, uh, a narrower uh, field of view so this suits the more vertical format to, to, to zoom in like that. Well these hawthorn trees seem to be the order of the day scattered around this landscape so I'm just going to go with it. Ooh, a rainbow. Wrong direction. Does that mean I'm going to get rained on now, though? Double rainbow. Still the wrong way, though. Oh, but there we go. Conclusive evidence. What's at the end of a rainbow? Not a pot of gold. It's just a tree. Well, from a rather wet end of the day, this is me saying goodbye from Oldswater. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, please subscribe, do check out E6. I will see you on the next one. So this is the lay-by challenge. So stopping off at um, lay-bys, six, six lay-bys. Taking a bit, this is uh, Oldswater. Stopping off at the lay-bys, six lay-bys along here, the west side of Oldswater. Stopping off at the lay-bys, pictures at each of the lay-bys, one picture at least, six lay-bys at Oldswater to take pictures as a challenge, six lay-by challenge.